hello welcome to my bedroom floor i actually tried to put some props in the back because <laughs> i didn't know how exactly i was going to start this video or make this video um so this is where i am so i just got back from a three-week osteoarchaeology well mortuary archaeology field school in spain it was in the north of Spain, really close to the French border, about two miles away from the French border, along the Camino de Santiago. So we were in Rontes Valles, also called Roncesvaux, and I was basically there to see if I liked excavating bones, and turns out I do. <laughs> Needless to say, this video will be showing human remains, um, skeletonized human remains, so if you're not okay with that, I wouldn't watch this video. I think it would have been pretty difficult for me to make this video without showing any of the human remains that we were working on. Um, but I also want you to be able to see that this site is really complicated, but it's also incredible in that I was able to gain a ton of osteology knowledge within a very small span of time. Now, I arrived at this field school with very little prior knowledge. I had taken one online course with Leiden University about, um, it was called The Truth in Our Bones. It's actually on Coursera if you wanna check it out. And it's, I think it was free. Yeah, I got a certificate, so I paid for it. But I basically came in just knowing the basics about what bones can tell you. I didn't even know the bones of the body. And the first thing that we did when we got to this field school is that we did a spotter test. So we had a bunch of different bone pieces around the table and we had to identify them and also side them. And that was the first time I even realized that, oh, right, bones have sides to them. You have a left and a right. And <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Our camp was about a two minute walk from the ossuary in Rontes Valles. Now Rontes Valles is a very small village. And the reason most people know about it is because of the Camino. So every day there were a lot of pilgrims, there was a hostel, that's where our showers were. And even though the village has only about 20 people, you know, 20 inhabitants that actually live there, and most of them are part of the Colegiata, which is the big kind of church property that makes up most of the village and the ossuary, um, most of the other people were just pilgrims. And it got pretty busy, surprisingly. So that way is the Camino. A lot of pilgrims are coming through this way. And then our camp is down here. We were housed in these really nice little um, cabins. And honestly, they were really comfortable. I think for my first field school, I was pretty spoiled because I've heard about other field schools where you're just camping or where you have to just make your own arrangements and you don't have anything provided for you. So honestly, this was really nice. So the ossuary, the site itself that we were working on is basically this building with a cloister. So this is the cloister and the silo, the silo is inside. So there's like graves at the bottom and then inside there's this basically stone room underneath and that's where all the bones are. So our lab is set up in the cloister. Um, I actually kept kicking this one woman's like gravestone nameplate. It was a little awkward. And around the pit where we had set up our lab, that's actually an active cemetery. So you have these sort of tombs on the ground with people's names on it. And every so often, you know, people from the church will come and replace the remains basically. So the last person who was interred there will be taken out, thrown into the pit, and the new person will be buried. So for that reason, the site is actually really complicated in stratigraphical terms because it doesn't follow a chronological pattern because normally you would think, okay, the oldest skeletons are at the bottom and then you have newer ones, but it's not necessarily the case because people are throwing in old remains from cemeteries, from, you know, there was a burnt building at one point that all the debris was put in there. And then there's the people who have been dead for a while, but their resting place is being occupied by someone new. So then they'll be chucked into the pit as well. So it's pretty strange. <laughs> So the remains are mostly commingled. I mean, it's just dirt with bone fragments and some of them are in pretty good shape. Most of them are very fragmented. Um, so we would excavate and then we would have people upstairs in the lab identifying all the bones, sorting them, and then doing an inventory to figure out the MNI, the minimum number of individuals. Yeah, 
yeah. Yes, ma'am. We had two days off in the middle of the session and a couple people went to Saint Sebastian, some people went to Saint Jean Pied Port, but I also wanted to go to Saint Sebastian, but the weather was awful all around the Pyrenees area. So I ended up staying and going to the next village over in Burgetti, which was also where the only supermarket was. So we had actually done a little excursion there. The cool part about it is that you take the Camino to the next village, so I technically walked the Camino a couple times during my stay. Okay, so we just got into the next village because this is where the closest supermarket is, and I'm gonna get some snacks. We're all getting snacks, we're all getting chocolate. This is a new phone, so I don't know where the camera is. Hi! <laughs> This literally just tastes like butter, and I'm kind of obsessed with it. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you I thought did. it was good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> While I was there, of course, we're in the Basque country, so I got to learn a lot about Basque mythology and Basque nationalism and Basque archaeology and how it was pretty much interrupted by the Spanish Civil War and how the archaeology itself is pretty behind because they've had to make up for lost time. But the path to go to Burguete goes through the witches' woods. So there are these woods where I guess there were covens at one point, and, and all throughout Navarra there is um, there's various places you can visit to do like a witchcraft visit, you know, or a witchcraft tourism <laughs> trail. So fun fact, um, of course I remind myself of this as I'm in a pretty dark part of this forest. This is actually the witches' forest, the witchcraft forest, because they used to like burn witches or something in here anyway i just heard a weird sound and i was like hmm that's right i'm in here uh, some sort of bird or something i don't know okay i'm gonna be real with you um this is like a different vibe <laughs> being alone like in the rain there's literally nobody behind me, nobody in front of me. And I just heard the weirdest freaking noises that I'm not gonna lie, kind of freaked me out. Oh, I see the end of the forest. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. So that was pretty cool. And then actually the forest right by our camp was called the Basahaun Berro, I think. And the Basahaun is, I guess, this like forest man being who, you know, guards the, the forest and protects the forest. So, you know, it was the Basahaun forest <laughs> that we lived right next to. One of the cool things that happened while I was there is that the king and queen of Spain came to visit. <laughs> so they were actually there to celebrate the end of some holy year that had to do with the Camino. So they were visiting certain locations on the Camino and we were lucky enough to be, uh, you know, visited by them. It was kind of crazy before because there were guards everywhere. You know, we were asked where we were going at all times. You have to show our IDs and everything. And, you know, it's the Basque country. So of course there's a lot of political issues that go on even today. The King and Queen of Spain, symbolically, it's very, Spanish, it's not Basque, so they were definitely, I think, concerned about something like that, but we're in the middle of nowhere. I don't think anyone's trying to do anything bad, but who knows? But the visit itself was really quick. I was actually excavating in the pit, so I didn't really see them. The king and queen and all the ministers and everybody, like, ducked their head in the, the entrance just to see what we were doing, but then they left right away. They were mostly in the lab area, and a couple of my friends made it onto the video that they did, because there was, you know, obviously a lot of press. Um, and so you can see them visiting the lab, and, and we had laid out an articulated skeleton for them um, of a soldier that had been excavated, uh, oh, I think a year or two prior. Um, so that was pretty cool. I guess that's a cool flag. I can say I met the king and queen of Spain, even though I didn't actually meet them, but I saw them. Another thing to mention is that while this ossuary is mainly commingled remains, there are articulated burials inside of them. And those were the most, to me, the most exciting because these were remains that we could eventually hope to identify and learn more about when, you know, they were sent to the lab and analyzed. So the first skeleton we found was a skeleton that actually had quicklime 
on the torso, pre uh, preserving the ribs and the um, vertebra really, really well. So we found the skull first and that was really, really, really exciting. And then we just started looking for the other bones, you know, the humerus, humeri, and then the quick line. And when we had found the feet and everything, we were able to photograph it, sketch it, and then we took the quick lime off and there, super well preserved, were the ribs and the rest of the vertebrae. It was so cool. And then once we had done more photographs and more sketching, we took the bones out and they will be cleaned and then eventually bagged up and then those will be part of the remains that are eventually analyzed. Because obviously with all these commingled bones that we're taking out of the soil every single day, there's no way that we can clean all of them, care about each and every one of them. It's unfortunate, but really we're trying to um, get an idea of what those populations were dealing with in terms of pathology and also to create a better idea of the history of the area and who was passing through. The main goal of this project is actually to see how deep this ossuary goes because we don't know. We know that it was at least around in the 12th century and then people think that maybe it was actually built in the 8th century, but we really don't know. Of course, there's a lot of legend that gets tied into it because of the Song of Roland, La Chanson de Roland, which, if you don't know, is a French epic, basically the Beowulf of the French language. <laughs> it's the oldest written piece of French literature that we know of. And it talks about this crazy battle in 778 between Charlemagne and the Basques. In the story, they're actually replaced by Muslims, and basically you realize that the whole story is meant to be propaganda for the Crusades. Um, but in reality, it was like <laughs> a small group of Basque people who defeated Charlemagne's entire army in the Battle of Monsmou Pass, which is right up where we are. And actually we got to do a little hike um, up towards this little memorial where, it, you know, it's a memorial of Roland, supposedly where he died, and it's beautiful up there, but you can also see how it would be really easy to cream an entire army if you caught them in a valley like that. <laughs> Towards the end of the field school, we had found more articulated skeletons, which was really exciting, but also made me really sad that I had to leave because <laughs> I can't wait to see the progress that gets made on that site. Um, and we found some really strange burials where it seems like maybe people were buried in a hurry, maybe with a little care because there were a couple bodies next to each other on top of each other, every which way, really not in a Christian, style burial at all so that's really interesting and i can't wait to see um the analyses that come out of that so i leave in like two days and i really want to stay longer i'm just now getting really into this and we finally uncovered an articulated skeleton um you know photographed him and then we bagged him up and he'll be sent to the lab at the end of the season to be to be worked on then we found more graves or at first we thought it was more graves but it turns out it's just a bunch of burials where the people were buried right on top of each other so there was one guy with a foot on his face then i was excavating foot and mouth guy as i like to call him and then we found the pelvis of the other guy lying on top of him this will definitely not be my last field school because i love this already and i feel like this kind of site this ossuary for my first archaeological site is pretty incredible because it's so difficult and there was a huge learning curve. I mean, I came in here with 1% of osteological knowledge. Then the fact that we're digging up all this stuff and just bones are popping out all over the place, then you have to distinguish between the bones that are part of the soil and the articulated skeletons. That's really, really challenging. The staff here are incredible. The lectures we had were so, so interesting and I don't want to leave. Like I want to stay for the second session, but I need to find a job and I need to start making money. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. All that to say that this was an incredible, incredible place, an incredible experience. The staff were incredible. I, how many times am I going to say incredible? But the staff were really, really intelligent. They were so patient with us because most of us really didn't have a lot of experience. And needless to say, I think I'm going to do a master's in this later. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Just
just like <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to end this, but um, yeah, if you're ever on the Camino, make sure to keep an eye out on your Rontes Valles stop. So in the meantime, stay safe and bon voyage, and I'll see you in my next video, whenever that may be.